So a mesenchymal stem cell is a, a cell that can become cartilage, fat, bone, blood vessels. Um, other people are also trying to drive them, for example, into insulin producing cells. We have investigators in this institute doing that. So they have a lot of potential. But the most intriguing part to me is their ability to limit inflammation. When we transplant islets in the pancreas, they get a great deal of the blood flow. They have a lot of vascularity. And uh, when we transplant them, they don't, they don't have functioning blood vessels. And we know that in our preclinical models, it takes about a month for the blood vessels to develop. So the concept was knowing that these, stem, these mesenchymal stem cells can actually uh, stimulate vascularization, that if we transplanted the islets with the MSC, we get vascular, vascularization more quickly, thereby allowing the islets to function faster. In addition, we know the cells are anti-inflammatory. They, they limit early inflammation that occurs when we first put islets in the body. That inflammation, any time something invades the body, a splinter, you get redness, you get heat, it's inflammation. And that's a non-specific effect of the immune system. And we know that MSC can limit that. So the idea that we could increase vascularization, limit the inflammation that we know occurs early post-transplant was very attractive. And the hypothesis is that when you give them in, the, in a blood vessel, that they migrate to the site of inflammation. And so we believe that they migrate to the liver where the islets are rejecting, limit the inflammation, and then stimulate uh, migration of stem cells into the area. In a paper that we published last fall in, in the journal Diabetes, we uh, published the results in which we showed that animals that got mesenchymal stem cells transplanted into the liver with the islets had double the function or more of a, as compared to animals that got islets only. Um, and that was at one month post-transplant. Furthermore, when we saw a rejection of episode, we were able to administer additional mesenchymal stem cells and reverse the rejection process. That was exciting because we've only seen that once before. But even more exciting was that after reversal of the rejection process, we actually saw enhanced function. So we don't know if the mesenchymal stem cells recruit stem cells to the area and they become insulin producing cells. Do they have effects on the liver that cause it to uh, handle the insulin better? We don't know the exact reason, but there was clearly reversal of rejection and enhanced function, less insulin requirement than before the rejection episode. So we're very excited about that. We will be looking at what is the best cell. There are a lot of different types in what people call mesenchymal stem cells, and we want to try to define what is the optimal cell to enhance engraftment. We know that they increase vascularization uh, and they're anti-inflammatory. So what's the ultimate product? What's the ultimate matching between donor and recipient? Can we use third-party cells that we bank so that they're available ahead of time for different patients? And we're, uh, we'll be studying that in conjunction with another group looking at kidney transplants. That's Dr. Amelia Bartholomew and doing gene studies with Dan Solomon at Scripps and putting it all together in a unique database with Dr. Kenton McHenry at the University of Illinois. So we're very excited about that. I tend to be more conservative, uh, having a daughter with diabetes and extremely sensitive to how people feel about hearing that something's around the corner. Um, I think it will be at least two years before a clinical trial. I think that's one point that's very important. It, it may seem like to people outside the lab that this is taking forever. And uh, in fact, we've made big strides in the laboratory, but they haven't gotten us to the clinic yet. And, and actually, our mesenchymal stem cell work is a perfect example. Um, it was something I thought of back in the 1999. Submitted a grant. It was funded in the early 2000, 2001. We completed that grant. It took until last fall. Uh, it, the grant was completed in 2006 to get that data uh, published and now to get a new grant to continue those studies. Despite the fact that we've made big advances, they need to be duplicated, they need to be standardized. In order to get them into the clinic, we still have a lot more questions to answer, yet that data that we obtained was unprecedented. So there's a lot more going on than meets the eye.